would be your advice for, um, I guess, someone that is listening in, that is tra- transitioning specifically like you did from rugby to AFL, um, maybe not so much from the nitty-gritty strength and conditioning point of view, but just the challenges of the logistics and getting used to how things are done differently, whether it be um, the flow of the day uh, or, you know, I guess, just talk from your experience, what, what are some of the things that the first six months can sort of catch you off guard what, that AFL clubs do differently to rugby and then maybe flow into how there's a lot the, the similarities um, in working in team sport uh, and, that you know, transfer no matter what code you are. I think the biggest thing that you've got to do early doors is respect the cultural differences quite quickly, you know, so just because it is very different to what you did in one code doesn't make it right or wrong. And I certainly didn't want to try and transplant my program from the Bears into the Crows system. Um, there were things that we did bring in, you know, and that was partly why you got brought into the role was to bring a little bit of variety as well. But I mean, probably, I mean, one of the biggest differences in footy to rugby, say, for instance, is, um, you know, in rugby, there's a, both sports have a big, you know, mass, strength, power, demand. But the priority of that is probably slightly different across both sports. You know, rugby, you can lose a game because you're not physical enough, regardless how skillful and how good your running is. And in footy, you can lose a game because you can't run and keep up with play well enough, regardless how physical and strong you are, you know. So, and the schedules are shifted slightly differently to reflect that. What about uh, neck training in, in Australian rules football? Is that something that you've, is relatively aligned with what rugby players would do? The fact that it is collision based and contact not as severe as obviously as rugby, but I guess that the fact that it is 360 degrees and a lot of the contact comes from um, partic- particularly not knowing where, where the hits are coming from. Uh, how do you sort of tackle on neck strength training for, for football players? Yeah, it's actually something we've done quite a, a lot of. I say, I say a lot of. It's been it's been consistent within within the program. Um, again, not super advanced or not super um, aggressive, but like very consistently factored into the um, the program. So um, yeah, um, we most of the lads I've worked with hadn't had much exposure to neck strengthening um, beforehand. Um, I'm certainly a, a big fan of including like a lot of our. Um, you know, our shoulder strength, our neck strength, our, our, our upper trap work in and around a lot of our pushing work. So we'll try and most sessions, we'll try and complement some of our pulls and pushes with some neck isometrics or some holds or falls. Um, we've done some banded flexion extension work as well. And is the role of the head of strength and power different in rugby than it is Australian rules football? Like, would is one of the codes where you, or one of the clubs that you've worked in or heard of from other clubs where strength and power coach would get involved in the combat grappling, um, whereas maybe in other clubs or other codes, it's more just left to the coaches or perhaps a specialist grappling coach. Um, yeah, talk us through your experiences there. Yeah, it's quite it's quite funny actually, because um, so um, when, when I arrived at the Crows, um, Nixie basically uh, been in for a few days and sort of pulled me into the office and he's like, oh, look, I'd like you to do our, our tackling work. You know, you've got a rugby background, you've wrestled, you know, you probably, you know, so, and I was a bit like, oh, I, you know, I, I wasn't expecting that. And it's certainly not something I would have had much exposure to in rugby. You've seen good things, but, um, you know, I, I basically said, oh, look, as long as I'm not paying for if I'm bad at it, because, you know, no promises, I'll be good at it, you know. Um, but I think, um, like in rugby, you typically have a defence coach. So um, defensive systems in rugby are a lot more systematic. Well, defensive systems are clues in the name, but they're they're very system based. They're very sort of um, disciplined, and you have set roles and, and sort of protocols and you know policies that you you have defensively, and most of that stuff would be taken care of by the technical coach. Uh, what's your stance on priming? Is it something that you do at the Crows, and um, do you do it differently with exercise prescription or different intensities with footballers compared to rugby players, or, or is it or is it sort of similar? Yeah, I, I personally, I'm a big believer in in priming um, sessions. I think for two reasons: one, there's a lot of evidence to support they work, um, and two, it's another opportunity to develop a stimulus in your training week when you're fresh, when you're not fatigued, that you may not get earlier on in the week, particularly in sports like footy and, and rugby. You know, the boys are absolutely like buggered still foot by you know monday tuesday you know so you lose a lot of your week recovering from the stimulus of the game so any opportunity you can get a high quality stimulus in i like that um one thing we used to do quite well in rugby was our team runs and our captain's runs um we used to get the guys to do speed and sprint 
as part of those as a primer the day before game. In terms of the strength and power aspect of the role, how do you sort of incorporate like player specific demands and the individualization, if you like, uh, obviously managing you know, a large squad number of 40 to 45 athletes. Um, yeah, talk us, talk us your sort of stance or philosophy on that. Yeah, I think um, so in, in order to do that, you need a good sort of profiling battery as, as a first point of call. And it's something I'm, I'm always pretty, um, pretty keen to bring in um, wherever I've worked and wherever I, I do work. Um, you know, I think um, if you're not, if you if you're not tracking your general physical qualities, it's difficult to determine where you want to place your effort and your time in the gym. Um, and it, it's not like a comprehensive battery, but you know, you're talking some max strength stuff, some jumping um, options, you know, some isometric strength, and and um, then you're talking things like your dexas, your um, yeah, we, we, we run a one for four one k as the crow, so you your conditioning 